Okay, so, um, so today we're going to find derivatives of exponentials and logs. So before we start all that, we just got a, a little bit of review. Like, what is a log? Why is, so what is, what in the world is a log? Well, a log, in other words, number one, what is the missing term? Does anyone know what the missing term is there? What's that? It would be the exponent, right? The answer for logs, the answer is the exponent. We use logs when we don't know the exponent. When the exponent is the unknown, we use logs, right? So however you did it, however... So when I teach logs in Math 3, I teach what's called the loop trick. The loop trick changes a log to an exponent. So we start with, oops, we start with the base. Okay. So we say 4. And then I do my loop. I go from here to the other side. There's nothing there, right? So that's a question mark equals, and then I come back around to the equal sign. One half. So in other words, this log question is just asking which power would make it true, right? So what power would turn four into one half? That's what it's asking. So my question is, what power would it? What power would? turn four into one half. I can't divide it, I can't multiply it, I can't add or subtract, it's just an exponent. So what exponent would make four into positive one half? Well, four is a whole number, right? One half is a fraction. So to go from a whole number to a fraction, I'm going to have to flip it, right? So there's going to be a negative there. And then to go down from 4 to 2, what do I have to do? Take the what? To go from 4 to 2, I can't divide by 2. I can't subtract 2. The only thing I can do is this guy here. But what would I do to make 4 to go down to 2? Not negative 2. I would take the square root. Isn't the square root of 4 2? So the square root is a power of 1 half. So 4... to the negative one half is the same thing as one half. You flip four, right? I flip four. That's, I mean, that's what the negative does. And then you take the square root and you got one half. Okay. The next one, now we have to find the missing base. The missing base. So x to this power equals this. So in other words, x to the third power equals 81. Well, x would have to be positive 4. Because 4 times 4 times 4 makes 81. So that's logs. We use logs when we don't know what the exponent is. Okay. Okay. So now in this class, we really don't talk about regular logs. The one we focus on is the LN, the natural log. All right. So we did two problems with natural, with a regular log, L O G, you see it, logs. My question is what's the difference between a log and a natural log? Right. On your calculator, they're all there. On the calculator, the buttons are all there. Mm -hmm. 
log is always by natural log. They're always on every single on every single scientific calculator or graphing calculator. Log and natural log are always right next to each other because they are the same thing. They both mean log. But what's the difference between a regular log and a natural log? There you go. So a natural log just has a very specific base. A regular log can have any base, right? Number one had a base of four. Number two had a base of four as well, but it could have any, any, it could have any base. A natural log has to have a base of E. So in other words, if we wanted to say the natural log, or sorry, log base of E for some number, that would just be natural log of X. That's the difference. Still does the same thing. It's still looking for an exponent, but it's just a special type of log. Where does it come from? Well, you don't really need to know this from this class, but this is where it comes from. It's a limit problem. As I plug in numbers that are closer and closer to positive infinity into this function here, I will always get closer and closer and closer and closer to some number. That number is E. That number is E. Okay, so that's why. As I plug in bigger and bigger numbers, you can think of the biggest number you can think of. If you plug it in for here and here, the biggest number you can come up with is E. It won't ever go over E. It'll approach E. It's kind of, E is kind of like pi. Pi is the, the, um, the ratio of circumference to diameter, right? So the perfect circle, if you were to draw the perfect circle and take its circumference and then divide that by its diameter, you would get pi. That's how you know if you have a perfect circle. This is the same thing. It just doesn't deal with geometry. It deals with algebra, okay? So... E is around, you don't, this is not really important for this class, but E is around 2.78, and it never ends because it's approximated. So it's around there, okay? In this class, you're going to see a lot of E to this power, E to this power, and you're going to see a nod in natural logs. Very rarely do we see a regular log. Very rarely do we see one of those. It's always natural log, natural log, natural log. Well, natural log is the same thing as a regular log. It's just very specific base. E, exponentials, you, most, you see a lot of E, E to this power, E to this power. Okay, so that's what we're going to focus on there. So the next part is how do you find derivatives? Okay, so an exponential means when the exponent is the unknown, right? So when I say exponential, I mean not like x squared. I mean the other way around, like 2 to the x power. That's an exponential because the unknown is an exponent, okay? So when we have a regular exponential, we're going to use this guy here. We're going to use that guy here. That guy is our rule we're going to use. If we have e to some power, we're going to use this guy right here. This is kind of our roadmap on how to solve it. Okay. Logs. If we have a regular log, how do you know it's regular log? Because it'll say log. That's what we're going to use here. If we have a natural log, we're going to use that right there. Okay. Most of the time we do these problems, you're going to have one of these guys or one of these guys. Not often, very rarely, will we get one of these guys. And not often will we get one of these guys. So we're going to focus on the two bottom ones, the two circled ones. We're going to focus on those. Okay? Okay, so here we go. Number one, example A. Here's the, here's the function. Y equals the natural log of 4x the natural log of 4x. Okay, so it's a natural log problem, and they want us to find derivative. Okay. So let's go up to where we have our... 
So it's the bottom one, right? So it says, if you have natural log of something, u, right? It's u prime, so the derivative of whatever u is, over whatever u is, right? So we have to focus on whatever this guy is. Take the derivative on top, divide it by whatever it is on bottom. Okay? So the first thing to do is figure out what u is. For a, u is 4x. So the derivative says, take the derivative of the, the, the inside. The derivative of 4x is just 4 over whatever it is, 4x. Simplify if you can. Well, I can divide both of them by 4. 1 over x. Done. OK. Example B, same thing. First thing always look at is, does it have a natural log? And what is the inside stuff? What are you trying to find the natural log of? In this case, the first one was 4x. The second one was x squared minus 3. All right, so we're going to use the same rule. I don't know why it says number 2 there. It should be b. Um, y prime equals... So the derivative says, find the derivative of the inside, 2x squared minus 3. Well, the derivative of that is 2x over the bottom. Can't factor the bottom. Done. That's the derivative. Okay. All right, let's look at letter C on the back, back of the uh, top of the next page. Do that one on your own. Try letter C on your own. Okay, so it's a natural log of 3x squared minus 5x plus 8. So to find the derivative, We're going to find the derivative of that stuff. So the derivative of the orange stuff is x three, uh, sorry, 6x minus 5 over everything on the inside. You're done. Can't factor the top. I mean, you could try to factor the bottom, but you would have to... Let's see, it would have to add up to be, let's see, multiply to be 24 and add up to be negative 5, 8 and 3. But I don't think it would cancel out. I don't think it would factor with the top, so we're done here. Yeah. Okay. Where's the 6x minus 5 on top come from? The derivative. Oh. Okay. All right, letter D. Same rules, letter D. Now they're going to kind of change it up a little bit. Still a natural log, right? And the natural log is still this guy here. So now the inside stuff is the square root of x. Well, when we're finding derivatives, what's the first thing we do if we have a root? Rewrite it to an exponent. Yep. So y equals the natural log of x to the 1 half power. Same thing, same thing we just did. Y, e y prime equals the derivative of the stuff. So the derivative of 1 half x, let's see, move 1 half to the front, x to the negative 1 half. That's the derivative, right? We've done that a few times. Over whatever it is, x to the 1 half. Now we have some, I have a fraction on top of a fraction. I have one half on top of a fraction. I can't leave a fraction on top of a fraction. And I have a negative exponent, right? 
So the negative exponent is going to have to move down. So this is what's going to happen here. The 1 of the fraction is going to stay on top. The 2 of the fraction has to move to the bottom because it's a fraction. And then I get times x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half. Right, because I moved down that other 1 half. What do we do with the exponents? Add them up. 2x. Okay. All right, let's try the letter D now. Or sorry, skips, it skips E. I don't know why it skips E, but we'll go to the next one. All right, okay, so now we have a natural log, right? And the natural log is of X. But I also have an X squared in front. So what do I have to do? Say what? Say it again. Make it the exponent. No. If it was like a 2, yeah, if this guy right here was like a 2, then you could do that. Absolutely. If it was a coefficient or if it was any other number, you could do that. But it's not. It's an actual function. X squared is an actual thing, actual function. So this here is actually x squared times the natural log of x. So if I have two things that are being multiplied times each other, and I need to find derivative of it, what am I going to use? Product rule. Product rule. Product rule. OK? So product rule says the first times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of the second is just the natural log. So what's the derivative for natural log? The derivative of the stuff. Well, what's the stuff for natural log? So the derivative of that would just be 1 over x. And then I find the derivative of the first now, which is 2x times the second. Okay, so I can rewrite this a little bit. So I get x squared over x plus 2x times natural log of x. Well, these guys have the same base here. So I can cancel out this guy and a power there. So that just leaves regular old x. x plus 2x times the natural log of x. That answer is that answer is simplified. But like I said, sometimes they both have both both terms have an x. So sometimes they might do this, factor out an x. Either one of these is okay. Like I said, the most of the times you see these guys for this chapter anyway, most of the time you see these problems will be on multiple choice questions. So you're just trying to work until you match one. Work until you match something, oh, I see, A, B, C, D, whatever one you match. E, both of those are the same. Sometimes they'll factor out, sometimes they won't. Okay. All right, let's try the next one. Okay, so letter G. Top of the next page. So 
So this one is similar to the one we just did, except it's not multiplication. It's division, right? The natural log is still natural log of x. So for the last problem, we did um, product or product rule. So this one, we're going to do quotient rule. Quotient rule says the bottom times the derivative of the top. Well, we just found the derivative of natural log, right? We did that on the last problem. The derivative of natural log of x was just 1 over x. Minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is just positive 1 over the bottom squared. Okay. Okay, so one thing I can do over here, let's see. So I can simplify this a little bit. x over x, because if I multiply those two, I get x on top and x on bottom. That's just positive 1. Minus natural log of x, because natural log times 1 is just natural log of x over x squared. So you can write it as one fraction, one minus natural log of x over x squared, or you can write it as two fractions because they're both divided by x squared. Either one's okay. So the hardest part about natural log problems isn't finding derivative. It's just looking at them. Sometimes you'll get something like one of these guys. They look intimidating. They look very intimidating. But their derivative is not hard. Their derivative is pretty straightforward. Okay? That's one of the reasons why AP, the class, likes natural logs. Because they look extremely difficult, but they're not. They're not. Okay? All right, so the next thing is exponentials exponentials. So let's go over those rules for exponentials. So if we have a regular exponential, we're going to use the top. If we have e exponential, we're going to use the bottom. They're both exponentials, but one of the bottom one is a very specific type of exponential. The top is just a regular exponential. 2 to the x, 10 to the x. Okay, so let's look at the problem. So we have to find the derivative of e to the 2x minus 1. Okay, so let's go back to what we have to do. The derivative says for e, when you have e to a power, the first thing you do is what? What's the first thing we're going to do? Rewrite it. Rewrite whatever it was. Rewrite it. Do that. And then chain on. This is kind of like a mini chain rule. Chain on what? The derivative of the power. Whatever the power was, find the derivative. Just two steps. First step for e is always rewrite it. And then find the derivative of the power. Okay, so let's go back to that problem. So e to the 2x minus 1, the first thing we're going to do is rewrite it. e to the 2x minus 1 times. Kind of, a, like I said, a chain, kind of a mini chain rule. Now what we're going to do is find the derivative of the top. Or the, not the top, but the exponent. What's the derivative of the exponent? Just regular 2. So we can move the 2 to the front and make it a coefficient. 
So 2e to the 2x minus 1. You're done. That's it. Finding derivatives of e's are probably one of the easiest derivatives they are because it always there's always two steps. First step, rewrite the thing. Just rewrite it. And then find the derivative of what's ever up here, whatever the exponent is. Okay. All right, so let's look at this guy here. Derivative of e. First step, rewrite the thing. Next step, find the derivative of the power, 3 over x. I have two options for 3 over x. I can use the power rule or I can use the quotient rule because it is division. Either of them work. Both of them will work. I, for this one, I would probably use the power rule because it's easier just to move it up. It's easier just to say e to the 3x to the negative 1 power instead of having to do the whole power rule or the quotient rule thing. So I think it's a little easier to do it that way. But you can use the quotient rule for 3 over x. Okay. Okay, so the derivative. So we move the negative 1 to the front times x to the negative 2. Oops, not negative 1. It would be negative 3, right? Because there was already a 3 there. So the derivative of the power would be negative 3x to the second power. You're done. Clean it up a little bit. But that's the derivative. So I'm going to move the negative 3 to the front. I have a negative power. I'm going to move that down. And then times e to the 3 over x. Done. Okay. Okay, so do letter C. Letter C goes back to natural log. So I want you to do letter C. It's very similar to one we did on the last page, but it's a little different. Try this one right here. So we have quotient rule. So I'm going to do the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is just 1 minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Well, I've done that. This is the third time I'm finding derivative of natural log ln of x, just 1 over x, over the bottom squared. So inside the brackets on top, I can simplify these guys and just make it a 1. So I have just minus 1 in there. So on top, I'll have natural log of x minus 1 over natural log of x squared. So be careful because these two things are not the same. Sometimes people will do these, this. Those are not the same. One is x squared. One is the whole thing squared. We want the whole thing squared. Which is, that answer was different than the answer we got earlier, even though it was the same thing. Top of the page, 
similar, but not the same. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the next page, top of the next page. So the rest of this is just, what about this? What about this? Oh, what about this? What about this? So it's just the same rules, just following different things. I'm not sure if we're going to do all of them, but we'll pick and choose some of these to do. Okay. Okay, so now the square root isn't over x. It's over the entire thing. So I'm going to rewrite this. So this is natural log of x to the one-half power. So the entire thing is to the one-half power. So now we have to figure out how we're going to find the derivative here. Well, for this guy, we're going to use chain rule because I have something on the outside, right? This guy, something to the one half power. And then I have an inside. So I'm going to use the chain rule. Okay. So the blue, the derivative of the blue first. Well, move the one half to the front. Rewrite everything. Take away a power, so it's negative one half. Chain. Now find the derivative of the inside. Well, this is the fourth time we're doing it. What is the derivative of the green? Natural log of x. 1 over x. Yep, 1 over x. Okay, so I have two fractions, so I'm multiplying together. So I have a 1 times a natural log of x to the negative one half on top, and on bottom I have a two times x. So these guys went to the top, these guys All the orange guys went on top, the pink guys went on bottom. But I'm not done yet because I can actually move this guy down there because it's got a negative exponent. So 2x times, and it's actually the square root, so I'm going to give it back its square root. because it's one half power, so it would be the square root again. Okay. All right. All right, let's look at E. Look at E and F. They're very similar. They're extremely similar. But we won't get the same answer for the derivatives because they're different. They're similar, but they're different. So I have natural log inside the parentheses. So the natural log is part of the angle. Cosine of what? Natural log of x. Here's my question. What am I going to do to solve this? Not the product rule, you're close. If it was like this. If it was cosine of x times natural log of x, product rule, absolutely. But they're actually intertwined because what is cosine of natural log of x? So natural log is actually inside of cosine. 
So if something is inside of another thing and we're trying to find the derivative, we use the chain rule. The chain rule. Okay, so for the chain rule, that guy's the outside, that guy's the inside. Okay. So the first thing we got to do is find the derivative of the outside. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. So negative sine, rewrite everything else. Chain. Now the derivative of the inside, which is 1 over x. Derivative of natural log is 1 over x. And you're done. Okay. Now the other one, letter F. Are we going to use chain rule for this one, or are we going to use product rule for this one? Chain rule, yeah. It, again, if it was this, those two guys multiply times each other. If it was natural log of x, natural log of x stands on its own. But in this case, you're trying to find the natural log of that. So this is the outside. That's the inside. Okay, so the derivative, we're going to do the derivative of the blue first. Anytime we have a natural log and we need to find the derivative, what do we do? Find the derivative of the inside. So what's the derivative of the inside? Negative sine of x. Over whatever it is. Now, I don't need a chain on this one, actually, because I already found the derivative of the inside, right? I would only need a chain if I didn't find the derivative of the inside. I already did. That's the top. Part of log, part of the log is already built in the chain rule, right? The log, or sorry, the natural log, it already builds in the chain rule. These two guys already build in the chain rule. You see the chain here? And this is, this is usually written as 1 over u times the derivative of u. They just combine that together. So these two guys already have the chain rule built in. So if we're finding the derivative of a natural log or an exponential, they're just, um, it's already built in. So chances are you won't see it that way. Chances are the answer will be what? If it's A, B, C, D, chances are that's not going to be one of them. Negative sine of x over cosine of x. Because what does that guy equal to? Negative tangent of x. Negative tangent. Okay. All right, let's see here. We're not going to finish today. We'll finish tomorrow, but let's do one more. Let's do one more, and then we'll leave the rest for tomorrow. Let's look top of the next page. Top of the next page, this guy right here. This is the last one we'll do today, and then the rest we'll leave for tomorrow. So it's natural log of something, right? 
and the of something is on the inside. Okay. So the rule says anytime we have to find natural log of something, we find the derivative of the inside, x times sine of x over itself, right? So that'll be down the bottom. My question is, how do we find the derivative of the top? Product rule. This one is a product rule problem. Yep, this one is a product rule problem. Okay. So we have the product rule says the derivative, what does it say? The first times the derivative of the second. So x times the derivative of sine, which is cosine, plus the derivative of the first, which is just one, times the second. So I get x times cosine of x plus sine of x over x times sine of x. And there's a lot of x's. Question is, can I cancel out any of them? So let's, let's see. There's a lot of x's there. I cancel, I count five x's. Can I cancel out any of them? Which ones? I could, yeah. So the only ones that I potentially could cancel out would be the beginning ones, the, the, the ones in front, right? Problem is, I'm missing one here. If there was one there, you could cancel them all out, but there's not one there. I have th two terms on top and two terms and one term on bottom. They all have to have the same thing for me to cancel them out. And it's close, but it, they don't. Can't cancel out the X's because those are untouchable. Those are, the, those are the, the angles. So there's nothing, unfortunately, there's nothing we can cancel out. We are done. Okay. Okay, so tomorrow we'll finish. There's not much left to do. You can kind of see it's just natural log of this, natural log of that. And then that one looks, this one looks extremely intimidating, but I see a lot of ease and natural logs and things like that, it's not that bad. It's not actually that J is actually not that bad of a question. I took it from a test. It was a multiple choice test and I took that from it because it looked a lot more intimidating than it actually is. But when we do it tomorrow, it's not gonna be that bad. It won't be that bad, trust me. Okay, and then I have one more to do and then that's it. So tomorrow, I will give you time to work on some practice stuff in class. Oops. Okay, because we won't, it won't, this will take us 20 minutes to do. It won't take us that long to finish because it's essentially the same things kind of over and over again. Like for tomorrow, first thing I would do is rewrite this. We're not going to actually find the derivative, but. One half power, right? Same thing on the next one. Okay. All right. Okay, so we'll do the rest tomorrow.